Amen. Claim it. Amen. I really believe I can preach up to 80. Claim it. But that will sadden my heart because some of us will not be here when I'm 80. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> that's fine. You know, that's life. You're better than mine, than me, because you will be in heaven. <laughs> While I'm suffering arthritis. In <laughs> Jesus' name. Amen. Refuse it. Then. Praise God. <laughs> That's part it. of life. That's why we always walk. Because I have signs of old age. And I'm fighting hip replacement, knee replacement. The time to do it is now. To avoid it. Amen. Amen. Now is the time. Amen. You don't wait until it's too late. Okay, yes, let's go to the word now. Yeah, sakit ng likod ko. Hip eh, di talaga You can sit past Ah, that's okay. I'm 62 po, mukha lang 50, okay? Ah, gano'n? Oh, talaga. But I'm old. Mukha <laughs> lang. Amen. So don't let's <laughs> let's continue to study the word of God. Amen. Again, we're studying depravity. We have learned last Sunday that depravity, let's ask the Lord first. Open our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Spirit be our teacher this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We have learned that depravity is an inborn condition. It's irreversible. And number three, it's irreparable. That means you cannot fix yourself. Mm -hmm. Irreparable. Uh, there's no self medication here. Terrible. Our self righteousness, our filthy rights before God. Uh, and then I spoke, I preached on reprobation last Sunday. Uh, John MacArthur had a short video. I shared it on our mission society group on Facebook. Uh, you know, John MacArthur, my favorite teacher, even says that. You know, uh, re reprobation is irreversible. That's really serious. That, that means if you have reached the stage of reprobation, uh, it's almost 99.9% .9 that you will not repent. Right? Because uh, depravity can become stage 5, terminal. Amen? And when it is terminal, your, 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 your stage 5 cancer, you will never repent. Right? You will mock Jesus in your deathbed. It's irreversible. So do not develop into reprobation. Because according to MacArthur, when God reprobates people or a nation, the whole nation, he abandons that nation. Right? Uh, look at Romans 1, right? Talking about the world in general, right? Uh, when God pours out His wrath and gives over people, you know. Giving over means He will not interrupt. He will not stop you. He will not prevent you. He will not convict you. He will not draw you. He will give you over, right? Kung sa ano yung binuro, di ba? Binubulok yan, di ba? Napagkain. Pag binuro ka ng Diyos, mabuburo ka talaga. Mabubulo ka. And he will never touch your heart again. But this is this only happens when people suppress, willfully suppress or oppose the truth. When they change laws, government laws. Like even in the Philippines, we now they are introduced there are people, human rights movement that are introducing gay rights, equality. They want to pass in approved laws. They're passing, they're petitioning for the approval of gay laws. I don't know if they will win because we're a strong Catholic nation, right? So, yeah, when people try to suppress the truth, when people become atheists, lovers of sin, lovers of sex, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure, you know they have crossed the red line. And when they try to reject the Bible, they say this is not the word of God. Right? That's reprobation. 
And it gets worse when, when LBGT preachers, churches begin to preach their own gospel. That's apostasy. That's beyond hope. That means they have way, they have gone way too far. Mahirap na. It would be hard to bring them back to repentance because now they're deceived. Wow. Deceived. You know, the Bible is not the word of God. My teacher told us that it's okay. Homosexuality is okay. Now, if you have the same tendency, why will you repent? It's okay. The Bible is not the word of God. And if you become a defender for the gay movement, you're going to fight and defend it. Kasama ka na sa mga riot, protesta, parada. Wow. Right? You've way too far. It will be impossible to bring them to repentance. That's why they, those people are just waiting the judgment of God. In fact, Romans 1.18, God already poured out. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all men who suppress the truth with their wickedness. See? The wrath of God has already been declared. You know, their judgment is just waiting. It's deadline. Pinroclaim na yung death sentence nila. Hinihintay na lang yung execution nila. Yung kanilang, di ba, yung nasa loob ng kulungan, naghihintay lang ng petsa, ng date, kung mm -hmm. kailan sila bibitayan. Mm -hmm. Pero diniklare na yung death sentence nila. So these people, God has already declared their death sentence. Romans 1, those who do these things are worthy of death. You know, the last verse. So I know this is not good. People who are listening, it sounds negative, but it's the word of God. Man, wake up. If you are they're reprobate and going to hell. I'm here to warn you. I'm here to bring, to, to challenge you. Amen. I'm not here to say to you, you're okay, you're going to heaven. When the Bible says you are not. So I'm here to help you, to bring you. There's still hope. I still believe, well, John MacArthur said it's irreversible. Well, maybe if God wants to save 1%, he can do it. It's up to God. Right? God can still save one out of a million. God can still do that. One out of a hundred thousand, God can still save that one soul. Amen? So there's still hope. Keep preaching the gospel. So now I'm going to, that's just my introduction. Let's go to more verses. Today's title is Slaves, Freedom from Slavery of Sin. Because depravity, one of the descriptions of depravity in the Bible is we were born slaves of sin. We are slaves of sin. That's what depravity is. We are slaves of sin. That's why in John chapter 8, this is what Jesus said. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse uh, 34. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. These are the words of Jesus. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. So we, should, uh, we can ask the question, why do we sin? Why do people sin? Why does man sin? Bakit ba tayo nagko-commit ng sin? Well, the answer is because you are a slave of sin. You sin because you are a slave of sin. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is a slave? A slave is a servant of sin. You have no freedom. Right? Yeah. Sin is your master. You are not free. You are in bondage of sin. Amen. Uh, you're a slave, you know. During the time of slavery, maybe, you know, 100 years ago, right? In, in the U.S., there were slaves. Mm -hmm. They were not free. Mm -hmm. Their masters can hang them. Execute them by hanging. By means of rope. And there will be no justice. Yeah. You're not free. You're a slave. 
They can kill you. Your master can kill you. You have to obey your master. Amen. So you have no freedom. When it comes to righteousness, you are not free. Your will, your human will is not free. Your free will is a slave of sin. Right? You're that, in other words, you are only free to sin. You get that? You are free to sin. But you are not free to uh, prevent it. You are not free to counter it. You are not free to resist it. Mm -hmm. You cannot resist it because your, your will is in bondage of sin. You are a slave of sin. You are born in sin. You know, you are dead in sin. Right? That's how the Bible describes it. You are dead. You are blind. So now you are you're a servant of sin. A slave of sin. That's the reason why you sin. That means I cannot do anything that is perfectly righteous, acceptable before God. Everything that I do is an offense to God. Okay? Including your good works. Remember our criteria? Because human good works are not done in faith. Not done out of relationship with Jesus Christ. And it is not performed for His glory. If you like, if you're a dedicated firefighter and you're saving lives in the eyes of people, it is good works. But you're not doing it because you want to glorify Jesus. You're not doing it because you have a relationship with Jesus. You're doing it because you want a big salary. Mm. Because you have your own reason. I have to pay a big house. I have to pay feed my family it's yeah. for my purpose yeah. so god, when god is not glorified when it is not done in faith for jesus god sees that as selfish self-centered egotistical and filthy mm -hmm. that good work is a filthy rag in the eyes of god so it doesn't matter if you're a doctor you're treating patients because you are worshipping yourself. It's self-idolatry. If you try to live an independent life, you know, free from God, no God, mm -hmm. no faith, no worship, no obedience. I don't care. I, I'm living my life. That is idolatry. Mm. In the eyes of God, it's filthy rags. Self, the self-righteousness of man is filthy rags right so yeah that's because you're a slave of yourself you're a slave of your will and your will is depraved your human will is depraved right it's depraved and I'm trying to resist watching a lot of YouTube videos now shorts because it's all a demonstration of depravity. Yeah. Right? Everything is green. Everything is, is bad for you. Uh, everything is uh, ma mal full of malice. It's just depravity. Right? It's, it's a picture that men will not stop doing this. Because it's their nature. They're slaves of that. See, like, if I quote one word on short from the Bible, people will not laugh. <laughs> they will just ignore it. But if we say something stupid, there will be 100,000 <laughs> likes. <laughs> Amen? Especially if it's green. But if I say, well, we're born in sin, everybody will hate you. <laughs> they won't See, like it. Because human free will is in bondage of sin. Actually, I don't call human free will free. It should be called slave will. Your <laughs> slave will. Because you're a slave of sin. 
right? Your slave will or your bondage will because it's in bondage of sin. And when you're in bondage of sin, you're incapable of doing anything righteous before God. Everything you do is filthy before His eyes. Okay? That's what depravity is. You're a slave of sin. Right? So, lahat tayo alipin ng kasalanan. He who sins is a, is a slave of sin. And then, look at Romans. Romans chapter 6. It talks more about slavery here. Romans chapter 6. Okay, let's read more. Romans 6 verse 15. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? You are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness. Okay. Verse 19. For just as you presented your bodies as slaves of unrighteousness and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, that's what it means to be a slave of sin. Right? You present your bodies to your master, your members, your bodies, your hands, your eyes, your feet. You present members of your flesh, of your body, parts of your body. You present it as slaves of unrighteousness, leading to more lawlessness or wickedness. Why? Because we were born slaves of sin. That's why in verse 16, do you not know that whom you are obeying, you are a slave of it? So if you are obeying sin, the desires of the flesh, sin, yung... let's talk about alcoholism. You know what is alcoholism? It's when every Friday weekend, you have this urge. Addiction. Yeah. Urging. And then, then, a little bit of shaking, you know. <laughs> and always looking at your watch while working. I can't wait until it's 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Because <laughs> every Friday night, we have a Friday club, a drinking party. And now your flesh is, is restless, you know. At work, your flesh is restless. Your mind is restless. Because now, Addiction. you know, you can't wait any longer, right? It's an addiction. So maybe drugs, uh, sex, the same thing. Maybe you can't wait for your paycheck because you worked 100 hours for one week. <laughs> right? So, you know, it's a sort of an addiction. See, where are you submitting your body? Who are to, where are you submitting it? The, the Bible says, you know, if you're submitting it to your master's sin, then you're a slave of sin. That's how you know who your master is. Right? Look at verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you obey or present your yourselves, master. you are a slave of that. Right? That's my paraphrase. If you're presenting yourself more to Jesus, going to church, trying to go to church every Sunday... If you're disciplining yourself to read the word midweek or every day one verse a day, if you're trying to present yourself to Jesus so he can use you, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to support the work of the Lord, you know, with whatever you can afford, doesn't have to be 1,000, 5,000, 300, you know, the poor widow went to the temple with two cents because that's all she has. Then you are you are a slave of Jesus. That's how you know who your master is. Look at your life. Who are you serving? The world? You're a servant of your big house? Work, work, work. <laughs> you know how the Lord blessed us? We don't have to work double job. We didn't get a lot of money for income to get this house. This is a blessing. Amen. Amen. And I know people who are working two, three jobs. Glory to God, yes. 
my physiotherapist borrowed a ha like $200,000 to buy a house. And she's making three times the money I earn, maybe four times. And she had to borrow from siblings. She's my servant. Because she's massaging me. <laughs> and she had to borrow 200000 to buy a house. In addition. The last three years, maybe. I borrowed no one from anyone. I didn't borrow any money from anyone. See? Blessing of the Lord. Glory to God. It's because the Lord knows there will be a house here after 18 years. There will be a church here. Amen. Amen. After 18 years. Amen. See? Blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. Like Amen. But you know, through the years, 30 years, I, I saw I offered my body to the service of God. Amen. Even if we go bankrupt, I will still be in ministry. The Lord forbid. Yeah. Amen. Because I'm an evangelist. That's a lifetime gift that you can practice anywhere, anytime, wherever you are. Amen. 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 You know, I believe my ministry is not over yet. Amen. Amen. So, that's what it means to be a slave. What is, you're a slave to your master. Either you are a slave to God or you're a slave to sin. Look at what it says here. Either you are slaves of righteousness or slaves of sin. Right? Amen. See, verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. See, in other words, when you were slaves of sin, you were a slave of sin, incapable of true righteousness. Okay? Verse 22. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God. See the word slaves of God. Now, who is your master? Are you a slave of sin or a slave of God? A slave of righteousness. These are the words Paul used. Slaves of righteousness. Slaves of God. Or a slave of sin. Look at verse 18. For having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Amen. See, what is the cure to slavery of sin? What is the cure to depravity? If you are a slave of sin, how do you... If you cannot fix yourself, then what is the solution? Anong gamot? How can I be set free from sin, from something that... I am helpless and incapable of breaking free. What is the cure? How can you set free from homosexual tendencies? From sexual addictions, drug addictions, how can gambling addictions, how can you set yourself free from that? Well, it's in John chapter 8. We're going to flip back and forth. Jesus said, therefore, verse 36, John 8, 36, therefore, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. You are free indeed. Amen. If the Son, if Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. If Jesus sets you free, if the Son, therefore, if the Son makes you free, verse 36, John chapter 8. You shall be free indeed. The only cure is to be set free by the power of God. Amen. That's the only cure Amen. to addiction, Amen. to slavery of sin. And then back in Romans 8, look at verse 22. This is the cure, but now having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of Jesus, slaves of God, you now have your fruit to holiness. The fruit, the outcome is holiness, righteousness. When God sets you free, the outcome is holiness, righteousness. Amen? 
The solution is to be set free. Amen. By the power of God. Again, verse 18. Look at Romans 8. Verse, sorry. Did I say Romans 8? Romans 6. Romans 6, not Romans 8. Sorry about that. Romans 6, not 8. Romans 6, verse 18. And having been set free from sin. Again, the word set free. You have become slaves of righteousness. So, some people call this deliverance ministry. When God sets you free. Yes. From sin. From satanic bondage. From the bondage of sin. When God sets you free. Amen. The fruit is holiness. Verse 22. And the end everlasting life. Salvation. Eternal, eternal life. That is why, you know, the only solution is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the only hope. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, you can also be a slave of religion. Mm -hmm. You know, depravity can also manifest itself in religious works. Hypocritical self-righteousness. Hypocritical religious spirit. That's the wrong solution. You make yourself worse. Some people think, okay, maybe if I, if I become religious, I will change. Hindi na siguro akong gumumura kung ako magnonobena. Right? Does it work? Have you tried religious works, religious rituals? Do you think Demonstrating a religious spirit will help you change yourself. The more damage you create to yourself. Stop playing the religious game. It will only lead to hypocrisy. Remember how Jesus condemned the Pharisees? Because people who are religious, they think they are superior Mm. Right? Perfect. When they're driving on Hastings Street and they see the homeless, the drug addicts, they, they're quick to judge and condemn. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they think they're relying, depending on their good works. I go to church. I give my tithes. Remember the Pharisee? How he prayed? Lord, I thank you that I give my tithes. I'm more righteous than my neighbor. I, I fast. I'm more righteous than this person here. I fast. The sinner was praying too, right? In the temple. Remember Jesus' parable? The Pharisee, the self-righteous and the poor beggar. The poor beggar was confessing, repenting, declaring he was a filthy sinner. But the self-righteous began to boast of his good works. I actually heard... Yung dating daan preacher, patay na yun eh. Eli Soriano. It's really bad because his theology, he believes in salvation by good works. And in that video, he was attacking evangelical pastors. Mm -hmm. Evangelical preachers because evangelical preachers teach salvation by grace alone. It's only Jesus that can set you free from sin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen, right? Amen. It's by grace. That means it's a free gift. It's all of God. It's a special favor that you do not deserve. But you know, Eli Soriano believes that we're, we're, we're not just saved by faith, by, by grace, but we need works. That's after. Yeah. Good works. And he, he was attacking the evangelical preachers. It's 
Too bad I can't make a comment. You're not allowed to make a comment anymore. But it's a bad theology. It's a bad interpretation of scripture. Good works are just outcome of salvation. And look at Romans 8. Having become slaves of God, after you're set free from sin by the power of Jesus, you become a slave of God. You receive the righteousness of Jesus. Even the righteousness of Jesus is a gift. Right? It's imputed to you. It's assigned to you. It's a gift to you. Amen. Then what is the outcome? You have your fruit. The outcome. You, you have your fruit to holiness. Verse 22. Holiness is the fruit. First you change the tree. So the fruit. So the fruit will also be good. You have to cut the bad tree, make it a good tree. Then it will produce good fruit. Good fruit. Remember what Jesus said? A good tree will produce good fruit. And a bad tree, bad fruit. A bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Yeah. You know what, what that means? Jesus is talking about the, far, the religious establishment. If it's a corrupt organization, the fruit, Pharisees, the fruit will be bad. there will be no good fruit. Mm -hmm. The fruit is hypocrisy. Self-righteousness. That's why Jesus called them whitewashed tombs. Hip hypocritical, self-righteous people. So first, you, you, you change the tree. You know, if it's a good tree, it will produce good fruit. So what must happen first is, you know, God must first create an inner change in us by giving us the new nature, the new creation, right? Amen. Born again or born again, Amen. regeneration. Then he sets you free. The, you know, one of the miracles of salvation is you are free now. You are set free from the power of sin. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Right? Amen. Now you're now capable of obeying. See, that is why we obey, because God set us free. That's the proper order. Salvation first. Inner transformation first. Miracle in the heart first. Heart surgery, heart transformation first. And then the fruit follows. The good works follow. But if you're not saved, if you're just trying, you know what a religious person is? It's a sinner trying to pretend. Mm. That's what a religious person is. A dead sinner trying to be religious and righteous because he's deceived. He thinks that's how, that's the solution. He thinks that's the only, that's the method, the means, the way where he can attain salvation or where he can transform himself. Like, if I put on a robe today, I will look more righteous, right? Mm -hmm. If next Sunday I preach here wearing a white robe, so I will good. look more righteous to you, right? <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Holy world. You want me to try that? <laughs> Holy. But inside. <laughs> no. That's just outward. If your heart is rotten, you're still rotten. Mm -hmm. It's whitewashed tomb. You see, in terms pininturahan, di ba? But inside are dead men's bone, bones. So we need God. We need Jesus first to come into our hearts, set us free from the power Amen. of sin, from the power of deception, Amen. from the power of religion. You need to be set free from the deception of religion. Amen? Set free from deception. Set free from the power of sin. The outcome is salvation, holiness, life transformation, eternal life. That's the order. So salvation transformation is never attained by good works. By religion. Only by God. Remember what Jesus said. Therefore, if the Son sets you free. You are free indeed. You are free. You need to be set free. Listeners, 
You need to be set free from depravity, from the power of sin. Going to church will not change you. It helps. Especially if you go to the wrong church. <laughs> Even if you go to a born-again church, it will not change you. Even if you go to an evangelical, Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church, it will not automatically save you. Mm. You must experience the power of God in your life. Yes. You must experience yes. Jesus yes. in your life. Yes. 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 That's what will save. Amen? So remember that. Praise God. That's the solution. Amen. So, you know, this world, this world will get worse. Let's go to the solution too. That's why we need to keep preaching the gospel because this world will get worse. Thank I believe God. America has been abandoned by God already. Backsliders. Right? This modern world has been given over to modernity, modern laws, modern morality. Right? They have perverted the gospel. Yeah. Some they don't reject, they just pervert, they twist it to make sinners welcome. Prosperity picture. To yeah. church. Yeah. Now it's diabolical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Now it's satanic now. Worse, yeah. Like Satan deceiving millions using false religion and false gospel. So what is the solution? It's in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Preach the word. Preach the gospel. Yes. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. See? Preach the gospel. That's what we've been doing. Preach the gospel. Every Sunday, preach the Lord Jesus. Preach repentance. Believe in the Lord. Repent of your sins and you will be saved. Amen. Especially in these present times. Because in verse 3, for the time will come when many will not be interested in sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. See? But according to their own sinful desires, because they have itching ears, they will gather many teachers, false teachers, who will turn them away from the truth. And they will be turned aside to false teachings, false gospels. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. evangelist. Yes. This is what Amen. Paul said Amen. to Timothy. Amen. Endure afflictions. You are living in a, in a perverted generation. In a sinful generation. Preach the gospel. Amen. Because the time will come when many people, they will, they will, you know what they will look for? Prosperity gospel. Gay gospel. They will look for false doctrines because of their itching ears. Yun ang gusto nilang marinig. It's, in other words, a false gospel tickles their ears. It makes them feel good. You know, I love this church. They don't talk about sin in this church. <laughs> Just prosperity. They don't talk about repentance here. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about Sexual purity here. They talk. They don't talk about uh, the sacredness of marriage here. Wow. That means you can go live in common law, change partners, and still go to church. Mm. See. Honestly, marami pong church jan na niniliti lang ng tenga. Yeah. Hindi po ako ganon. Kahit batuhin po ako. Patayin. Hindi ko pwedeng i-compromise ang salita ng Diyos. Yes. Amen. Kahit huwag niyo ako swelduhan, ito ang calling ko. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's up to you. What church do you want to go to? Remember my story? The Filipino church got divided. 
because the young people they want an LBGT church. Yeah. So they all went. They, all the young people went there. Yeah. But you know, I'm blessed. But I hope your children will hear the truth. Yes. Amen. 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 See, these people will gather. See, this is this is these are symptoms of depravity, signs of depravity. They will gather many teachers. All false teachers. <laughs> they have a collection of favorite false teachers. But they'll never listen to John MacArthur. They'll never, never they'll never listen to sound preaching. See, their ears will be turned away from the truth. They will be turned aside to error, lies. So this is the cure. We need to warn the world of depravity. And we need to preach the gospel because Jesus is the only hope, the only solution. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The last, last verse, chapter 3, a warning. Know this, that in the last days, chapter 3, verse 1, perilous times will come. You know, times of stress will come in the last days. Times of stress. Because depravity will increase. Reprobation will increase. Amen. Praise God. Times of stress. Apostasy will come. Many will depart from the true faith, believing in false teaching. So brothers and sisters, our only hope is Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank Praise you God. May Jesus set you Free, free from indeed. the power of sin, yes. Yes. from the slavery of sin, from deception. My prayer today is may the Holy Spirit open people's eyes. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. May He open your eyes. See, another difficult symptom of depravity is people are blind. Mm. Right? See, yeah. You are incapable. 1 Corinthians 2.14, my last verse. How many more minutes? First right. Corinthians, you are incapable of knowing the truth because you're blind. Yung mambulag, magagamot niya yung sarili niya. Can he make his eyes see again? Can a blind make his eyes see? No. So if you're blind, you're blind. If you're spiritually blind, you're spiritually blind. That's depravity. One of the signs, symptoms of depravity. Blindness. Mm. Right? Verse 14. But the natural man, the natural eye, the natural brain, the natural mind. Verse 14, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of God, the gospel. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he understand or know them or receive them, the gospel, because they are only understood through the Holy Spirit revelation. That's difficult, isn't it? That means the brave people will never repent, be convicted, they will never understand the gospel. Unless the Spirit is giving it to them. Unless the Spirit is opening their eyes, convicting them, and giving them understanding of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So, let's do a short vision test today. <laughs> I test. Put your eyes in I test. front of this, this pulpit. Closer. <laughs> This is what my specialist do to me. He looks inside my eyes. Mm -hmm. Did you understand everything I said for the last 5-10 minutes? Amen. Not the full 45 minutes. The last 5 minutes. Did it make sense to you? Amen. Amen. Remember, if it's foolishness, you're blind. Mm -hmm. If you got bored, you're blind. If you keep looking at your watch, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Kain na Gusto na. ko pa naman din sa church ito, yung kwentuhan. <laughs> Kain na na. Kaya nga, pala yung tambay ko sa kusina eh. <laughs> If the word of God is born, did not make sense to you the last five minutes of my preaching, because the natural man cannot receive the gospel, it is foolishness to him. He cannot understand it because it is taught by the Spirit of God, by revelation. Yes. Remember, it is God who removes the veil, Amen. who opens the eyes, the blind. Mm -hmm. So if you did not get, if still you don't understand the gravity, After six weeks, you think the gravity is a candy? Ano ba yung depravity? Chocolate yata yun eh. Ano Tagalog nga ba nun? Gravity. <laughs> ah, gravity! Kanta yun ah. <laughs> What is depravity? Napakalala naman ng depravity. I showed you a lot of verse to explain what it is. Well, one sister said, now I understand what it is. Thank you, Lord. And when you deal with other people, you know they're depraved. Yeah. They're under a state of depravity, right? Yeah. Blind. So if you understood it, praise God. Yeah. If, if now you feel, oh, I need Jesus. He's my only hope. Amen. My righteousness is, it stinks. You know what Paul said about human righteousness? Filthy right. Animal poo. He called it rubbish. The Greek word used for rubbish is animal fecal matter. Evak. That's human righteousness. Now if you think, I was convicted of hypocrisy. Mabaho pala ako sa amoy ng Diyos. Remember what Paul said, so that my righteousness will come from above, not from the law, not from human works, not my own righteousness, but from above. I count all things ebak. Ebak. Si Paul yung muna nagsabi ng BS eh. It's animal shit. That's what it is. It's in the Bible. Animal, fecal, matter. So ngayon, hindi ko na sinasabi yung BS, rubbish na lang, pagbalit ako, rubbish! Mahanapit ko yung Greek word na, nasa Bible eh. I, I, I think you can say that, when you hate human righteousness, judgment, rubbish, fecal matter, ang baho nyo. It's in the Bible. Right? So now if you're convicted that you have this, you understood you need to be set free, you understood that religion cannot save you, You understand that only Jesus is your hope. Then uh, God, you have a good 2020 vision. That means God has revealed this to you. Amen. But if you're angry, papatayin ko yung pastor na yun. Lagi na lang ako tinatamaan dyan eh. Kasi siya naman ako ah. Nabibigyan naman ako sa'yo. Nagdadala ako ng Bible. Hindi po ba ako kristyano? Ano po ako lang sa akin? Well, you know what is missing? You must be born again. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. 